the recent advances in imaging really help to understand new biological questions and address those questions that arise during the development of new immunotherapeutic approaches. Imaging can help uh, to predict and to assess the efficacy of immunotherapy. So the role of imaging in immunotherapy can be preclinical or clinical. In a preclinical setting, it can support the development of drugs and therapies. It can lead to better data by repeat imaging and ultimately lead to savings in cost and time. In a clinical setting, its role will mainly be for the assessment of safety as well as it might play a role in the routine monitoring of patients under certain circumstances. So the main purpose of immunotherapy is to enhance or re-educate the immune system to identify and destroy a patient's cancer cells. There are several important immunobiological questions that have been addressed in our work. First of all, I would like to mention that the immune response and the immune treatments require different types of cells and processes involved. The immune response starts from antigen recognition, and there are several imaging approaches that address this particular phase of immune response. Immune cells can be driven to the lymph nodes and to the other sites of antigen presentation. Imaging can help ad addressing questions related to the trafficking of immune cells, antigen processing, and boosting of Im immune response using different drugs and modalities. Lastly, immune cells can traffic to the effector site, like uh, tumors or infectious sites. Here we can uh, address questions of trafficking of immune cells to the target organs, to the tumor, their persistence, their activation at the tumor site, their effector function, and ultimately imaging can predict the response to the therapies. There's a large variety of targets that can be assessed by imaging. For example, in cancer it can be on the tumor, it can be in the microenvironment, or it can be immune components of the whole immune system. Molecular imaging can help on various ways. For example, the immunopath or immunoimaging can visualize the distribution of tumor-specific antigens on the surface of cancer cells. Immunopath, basically an antibody is labeled with a certain radioligons like uh, PET emitters or SPECT isotopes, can allow for detection of immune cells infiltrating the tumor, thus providing us with information about the persistence of these cells and their proliferation or apoptosis at the site. Lymphocytes that infiltrate the tumor can be targeted using uh, so-called uh, proliferation markers that are specific for T cells and would discriminate between the newly developing tumor and rapidly proliferating T cells. From a safety perspective, knowing where the T cells are is incredibly important because on-target but off-site toxicities have been shown to have extremely damaging side effects for patients. In terms of development of the T-cell therapy, understanding how long the T-cells actually reside within the tumour can help us make informed decisions about if and when we should actually re-administer T-cell therapy. What we have decided to do is to implement some of our cell tracking strategies in order to develop this therapy further and facilitate its clinical translation. Other markers expressed on neutrophils, dendritic cells, other immune cells that are present in the tumor microenvironment uh, can also be tar targets for uh, imaging and it also can provide valuable information about the uh, development of immune response and the efficacy of immunotherapy supplied. So in preclinical settings we can address several questions that are kind of difficult to address in patients with cancer. We can perform studies using immunodeficient models of certain diseases and that helps us also to delineate the involvement of a certain cell type of or a certain pathway that is specific for the development of immune response. We can perform studies that rely on long-term visualization of certain targets. For example, the monitoring of long-term circulating lymphocytes can be tracked by bioluminescent imaging at a very high sensitivity for months after T-cell administration. Uh, this way we can follow uh, the progression of uh, immune response uh, over a long period of time and we're able to correlate it with our histological data obtained at certain time points. There are fundamentally two different ways of tracking cells in vivo, two technologies. One is direct labeling to track the cells, the other is indirect labeling to track the cells. When we're trying to label with a direct probe, 
we can use either the radio label uh, molecule that can passively or actively penetrate the cell membrane and get stuck inside the cell in an animal or in a patient and by obtaining a very high signal to noise ratio we can track the cells with high sensitivity over a relatively short period of time. Why? Because T cells tend to divide with a certain divisions the PET signal coming from this labeled molecule will be diluted between daughter populations. Upon division of cells the label gets diluted to the extent that at some point the cells cannot be seen anymore. Consequently, it is very important that the tracking period a researcher wants to observe matches with the efflux kinetics of the label from the cell. A major advantage of the technology is that it is very simple and easy to translate into the clinics. The alternative methodology is indirect labeling. It requires genetic engineering of the cells to be tracked. The approach that is being used for tracking immune cell populations is by the use of uh, reporter genes. Small pieces of DNA that are being inserted into the genome of immune cells that can express the foreign protein usually not expressed by the immune cell. By imaging the expression of the foreign protein, we can track the cells for a much longer period of times, weeks and even months. And also, the technology would sometimes allow us to track multiple cell populations within the same organism. The main advantage is that the reporter genes that are encoded genetically are passed on to the offspring. That means that growing cells can be tracked indefinitely. Another advantage of the technology lies in the fact that the administered dose is much lower than indirect labeling. Short half-life radioisotopes are being used repeatedly, but the accumulated dose is much lower as if the, when the radioisotope was there at all times, like it is in direct labeling. The imaging of uh, um, antigen-specific lymphocytes, for example, CAR T cells, the, uh, that have been shown to be very active in patients with B-cell malignancies, uh, melanoma, uh, mesothelioma, and other cancers, uh, can be tracked using PET by using either direct labeling methods or indirect labeling methods. Imaging immune cell therapies presents a really wonderful opportunity for us because if we're able to trace these CAR T cells in vivo, we could really open up the development of the therapy as well as improve safety and monitoring of these T cells in the clinical setting.